Hello everyone, now I will show you how to set up your Netgear router, RS300. And before I start, I want to remind you that if my video will help you, please support my work. Half of all donations I send to animal shelters. All details are in the description down below. The first step is to turn on the router. Take the power adapter. Plug one end of the power adapter into a wall outlet. Connect the other end to the router. Turn on the power by pressing the button. When it's powered on, a light will illuminate. It might take a few minutes for the router to fully power up. Next, plug the cable from your broadband provider or modem into the internet port. This port is commonly called to as WAN and is typically a different color. Each cable should be inserted until it clicks. Now you should reset the router to its factory settings. Hold down the reset button on the router for 10 seconds. Wait for the lights on the router to begin flashing. Occasionally, this button can be found inside the router casing to avoid accidental presses. Use a slim object to press it down. The router will reboot, resetting all the settings to their original factory defaults. Connect one end of the Ethernet cable that came with the router to an Ethernet port. Connect the other end to your computer or laptop's Ethernet port. Please wait a few minutes for the connection to establish. Awesome! Your router is now connected to your computer. Now you will need to set it up. Before we get started, I'll show you another way to connect the router in case you don't have an Ethernet cable or your computer doesn't have an Ethernet port. Simply plug in the router to the power adapter and connect the cable from your internet provider. This will turn on the Wi-Fi. If the router is new and hasn't been set up yet, the Wi-Fi network will be named after the router itself. Your router has a unique Wi-Fi network name and password printed on a label. Get connected to it. Great job connecting to the router. Now let's get started with the setup. First, open your browser and go to the URL that you see on the screen. Use the address bar instead of the search bar. Then click here. Read Netgear terms and conditions and click I agree button. And click next. Click next again. If your router settings do not look like mine, it means that your router has a different firmware. I made a video for every firmware type. You can find all the links in the description down below. The first thing you need to do is set up a new password. The admin password is used to log in to your router's web interface. Pay attention to the password requirements. Write your new password in the first field and duplicate it in the second field. Then select two security questions and write answers for them. You need them just in case you need to reset the admin password in the future. On this page, you can customize your network name and password. Click Next. If your browser does not redirect after two minutes, reload the page. On the next page, you will find the information you need to connect to a Wi-Fi network. If you were connected using the preset Wi-Fi credentials, it's time to connect using the new Wi-Fi credential. If you want, you can print them out. 
Click Next. If the router has not been updated for a long time, the next page may automatically start the firmware update process. If the new firmware is not available, click Next. After updating the firmware, you may be redirected to the Netgear website where you can register your router. If you want to, you can do it. I'm just going to close this window because I'm not going to do that. Log into the router's web interface again if you were logged out of it. Enter the standard username, admin, and password that you created a few minutes ago. Press sign in button. Close this window. In the top right corner, you can change the language of the router's website interface. To get the internet, go to Advanced. Set up Wizard. Press No, I want to configure the router myself. Then press Next button. On the following page, select Internet Settings. In most cases, there are two options, connection with and without a login. Almost always, your internet connection will not require a login. You can find all of this information in the contract you have with your internet service provider. If your internet connection does not require you to log in, or if you do not know whether logging in is required or not, select No. Leave account name and domain name unchanged. Then in Internet IP Address section, choose Get Dynamically from ISP. In the DNS section, select Get Automatically from ISP as well. You will need to clone the MAC address of the primary computer if your ISP only allows Internet access to a specific MAC address. Select Use Default MAC Address. If you are not sure about these settings, Check again that your settings are the same as mine. And click Apply. In most cases, it is not necessary to clone the MAC address. But if you can't get the internet connection after quick setup, later, in the video, I will show you how to clone MAC address. Now you need to reboot the router. To do this, go to the router's web interface if you were logged out of it. Go to Advanced, Advanced Home, click on the Reboot button, and click Yes. After restarting, wait a few minutes and try Googling something. If it doesn't work, check all the cables. They must be connected properly. Then log into the Router Control Panel again. Go to Basic, Internet, and choose Use Computer MAC Address. Click Apply button. And then, Reboot Router again. Go to Advanced, Advanced Home. Click on the Reboot button, and click Yes. After the reboot, wait a couple of minutes and try to Google something again. That's all. If my video was useful, please support my work. I send half of all donations to animal shelters. All the details are in the description below.